In today's episode, we will be discussing the unexplained disappearance of Juan Pedro Martinez Gomez, the most mysterious missing persons case in Europe's history. In the early hours of June 25th, 1986, a Volvo was seen starting its descent down the Somosierra mountain pass north of Spain's capital Madrid, an area rich with tragedy. All seemed perfectly normal. That was until the driver of said truck started recklessly overtaking nearby vehicles, cutting it so close that he knocked the rearview mirror off another truck. The Volvo, now driving at a great speed, began ramming into the back of a lorry, forcing it off the road. Seconds later, the inevitable happened. It crashed into a truck ascending the pass at the insane speed of 140 km per hour. The Volvo overturned and the tanker was pulling ruptured, its contents spraying across the road. The severity was only noted once the authorities arrived at the scene and realised it was sulfuric acid. Quickly, they called for lime and sand to be delivered to the crash site to neutralise the acid before it leaked into a nearby river, causing an ecological disaster. Once they neutralised the acid, the authorities searched the Volvo's cabin. Inside were two dead bodies. They were identified as being that of Andres Martinez and Carmen Gomez. Luckily, the other driver had gotten away with a few minor injuries. The Spanish civil guards, Guardia Civil, contacted Carmen's mother with the tragic news. To their utter shock, the woman replied, And the boy? Please tell me the boy is alright. This was the start of what would become the strangest missing persons case in Europe's history. Andres Martinez was an experienced truck driver from the town of Fuente Alamo in Murcia. He was married to Carmen Gomez and later had only one child, Juan Pedro. Juan, who was 10 years old at the time, had a dream of visiting the Basque country in the north of Spain to see animals grazing the lush green pastures of the region, which seemed like a world away from the barren, desert-like landscape of Murcia. Because of this, he made his father promise to take him if the chance ever arose. One day, his father came home with great news. He had a job coming up for a delivery to Bilbao in the Basque country and promised he would take him on the condition that he got good grades in school. After studying hard, the boy achieved his goal. Andres asked his wife to accompany him on the trip so she could watch over Juan when he unloaded the truck at the destination. After this, he promised to tour the Basque country for the following days. And so, at 7pm, June 24th, the family set off for Bilbao and were never to return home again. So, like me, you may be wondering why the boy's body wasn't in the cab. This seems strange, right? Well, bear with me, because this case only gets stranger from here. We know for a fact that the boy was traveling in the truck, as there was evidence of children's clothes, as well as cassette tapes that belonged to Juan. Many people speculated that as the cab had been showered in sulfuric acid due to the crash, the acid may have dissolved all evidence of the boy in his body. However, this was quite unlikely, as it would have taken more than a spray of sulfuric acid to completely dissolve the remains of a child. So then, where was he? We know for a fact that the boy was nowhere near the scene of the crash by the time the police arrived, as they searched the surrounding areas and found no evidence of the boy's body. They even searched underneath the capsized truck, as some theorized that the boy may have fallen out of the truck upon collision, but yet again, no body. So this leads to the question, was the boy even in the truck to begin with? Well, we know he was, as after the police checked the truck's tachometer and having visited the last known stop, an inn named Aragon in the town of Cabanillas. The police were assured by staff that a truck with a family of three had briefly stopped by for breakfast and even remembered one of them, a boy, having ordered a cake. They did admit that they had not seen the family board the truck but had seen them drive out of the parking lot shortly after. This more or less confirms the fact that the boy had accompanied them but still leaves us wondering where the boy was. The police were stunned and the boy was still missing. The Guardia Civil decided to re-examine the tachometer. Upon doing so, they found something peculiar. The truck had made 12 brief stops, stemming from a minute to 20. This was strange, as the truck would generally only stop once, if even, on the ascent. And what was even weirder was that there was no reason to have been stopping so regularly, as there was no traffic on the road that morning. The police then examined the truck and discovered that the truck's brakes were completely functional, which ruled out any assumption of there being a malfunction in the truck. Another bizarre revelation was, apparent to some eyewitnesses, a white van being driven by a Nordic couple was said to have momentarily stopped by the scene of the accident and picked up a strange small box. This, like in most other mysteries, was taken at face value and stemmed to many conspiracies of there being aliens to even drug traffickers involved, but more on that later. Now that we've gone over what happened, Let's get into the theories. Theory number one, the boy was kidnapped by drug traffickers. According to some, on the morning of the incident, there was a police check on the road. In order to escape detection, traffickers stopped a truck and asked them to smuggle the drugs past the police. 
the truck driver, being Mr. Martinez, refused, and so his son, Juan, was kidnapped, resulting in a high-speed chase down the pass, inevitably causing the collision. Later, the traffickers returned to the crash site in order to retrieve the case of drugs. This would explain the boy being missing, the brief stops, the truck's speed, and the white van, but is nonetheless highly improbable. The mention of a police checkpoint has yet to be confirmed as true. While it is true that many drugs were being transported from the south of Spain to the rest of Europe via the north, the chances of there being a spur-of-the-moment kidnapping of a child from a random truck is very unlikely. The apparently mysterious Nordic couple were said to have been doctors, as one of them helped treat the lorry driver who was driven off the road. They may have then stopped at the crash site to see if there were any survivors. This theory, however, does vary, from the kidnappers being pedophiles, to organ traffickers, to even a cult. Some even say that the mysterious package was actually the child himself. What they do all have in common though, is the fact that they are most likely false. Theory number two. The boy was swept away by a river. This theory states that after the crash, and the boy having been showered in acid, climbed out of the truck and went to a nearby river to soothe his burns. While doing so, he was swept away by the river. The river in question is called the Duraton. This river is more like a stream as it had very little water. Even at its peak during the rainy season, the river wouldn't have enough force to sweep away a child. What also demeans this theory is the question of how a little boy could have had the presence of mind directly after being in a deadly crash and having been showered in acid to go in search of a river to soothe his burns, especially after witnessing his parents being killed. Theory number three. The boy was kidnapped by an American couple who were said to have fled Iran to be their translator. This was proposed by a driving instructor who supposedly saw a confused looking young boy in downtown Madrid being accompanied by an agitated American woman. Apparent to the man, the woman had fled Iran and ended up in Madrid in search of the American embassy and was using a young boy with an Andalusian accent to translate for her. When questioned about the boy, the woman quickly changed subject. This is a strange theory alright, and was not believed by the police or the victim's family. The whole theory hung on the fact that the boy had an Andalusian accent. He was not from Andalusia, but his local area spoke with a th sound, which much like the Andalusians and South Americans, but this was not a sufficient enough lead to be investigated. Theory number four. Finally, a passerby, possibly the Nordic couple, stopped at the crash site and took the injured boy to bring him to a nearby hospital. But along the way, he died, and so the couple disposed of his body as to avoid suspicion. This is more likely than the last theory, and is somewhat more heartening, and is the one I would like to believe, even though it is still quite bleak. I hope, for Juan's sake, and that of his family, that if he did die, it was quick and painless, and that he may rest in peace, along with his loving parents. To this day, no one knows the whereabouts of Juan, and if he lived, or if he died. What a mystery fully deserving of its title of The Strangest Missing Persons Case in Europe's History, dubbed that by Interpol. Sorry for not uploading recently. School has been very stressful, and if I'm being honest, I lost all motivation to do anything. But I will try from now on to post regularly, just not as long videos, and in a simpler format than my past videos. Leave suggestions for what video I should make next. I'm thinking of making a true crime series, so if you don't want to miss it, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button. Thank you for listening, and sweet dreams.